So let me introduce you to our new Multi-Sync ME series. This is the second generation of the display, which has seen some enhancements to the existing ME1 product. This is not seen as a replacement, or it's actually seen as a successor. Uh, so many of the enhancements we have is feedback from listening to our customers and bringing the features into the display. So very quickly, some of the features, we have three HDMI inputs, uh, which are all identified as sources on the remote control. We have an integrated USB-C. So for devices, especially the newer ones now, where USB-C is the primary, or in some cases only input, you now have a native connectivity to the display. But we have some really cool features also within the screen functionality as well. The first one I need to highlight, and as you can see, this is very, very reactive as an IR command, is that our IR receiver is actually at the back of the screen. So through the glass, we have the ability to get much more accurate and quicker switching on IR. So on the menu, we have an input and an output. We actually have the ability within the screen, thanks to an integrated Android 13 OS, to have a startup app as the input that is shown as soon as the screen wakes up. We have the ability now to have input detect between the three HDMI inputs and USB-C. They're all digital. In the past, we haven't had the ability to have digital follow digital follow digital. This is a new feature in the screen. It's a fantastic feature to have. We also have the ability to do very simple things like change the modes. So where you have a resolution or a frequency of a input which is higher or lower than maybe a standard one, you can change it so the switch and stems consistent despite the device being different from the input signal. Uh, we have HDMI CEC now on all of the HDMI inputs. So any of the HDMI inputs can wake the screen up. We have scheduling. So we can add a power schedule. Uh, we can have a schedule that will allow the screen to behave even though there's not an input. So they can be timed to come on and off during the course of a day, or maybe somebody has unplugged their input, they've walked away and then maybe at seven o'clock in the evening, you need to shut a screen down, you need to shut a couple of screens down, you need to shut a campus down. This schedule allows us to do that. This isn't to replace what we can also do within our Navaset server edition software, where you can remotely control and uh, influence the behavior of the screen. This is something that can be done locally. So it's great for remote locations as well. From a security point of view, we have the ability to disable the ethernet, but in disabling the ethernet, we also have an option slot for an additional Wi-Fi card, which can slide into the screen, which allows you to connect the display to your corporate wireless. So making it very secure for people at the screen. You have the ability to connect it as still as a correct strong connected device. This is really important for our ecosystem. From the point of view of power save, we have the ability to have power save. So when the signal disappears, the screen will shut down after a period of time. We have it currently here set for five seconds. You can increase that to whatever duration is best suited for you and your audience. USB power, we have lock settings. So keeping with the security, if you've disabled your LAN connectivity, you can enable key lock and IR locks. Nobody can change or influence anything from the screen other than what the screen is specifically locked down to do. We also have a picture in picture function. We have a tile in, which allows you to use a tile matrix to have this in maybe a small media wall configuration. You can clone settings, so you can copy settings from one display to another, which makes setup of screens very, very easy. You can hide parts of the Android system, as it says. You can show the system, you can reset applications, you can upload applications. So this is a new feature, which is very powerful for us now in our story for our customer journey. Uh, from a settings point of view, you can check your storage space, you can update your firmware, you can do it locally or remotely, uh, disable OSDs. Uh, you can change time formats, which is great when you're doing central coordination for global deployments. So you can get everything set up to the correct time zone before it ships, which means when it arrives, the installer lifts it out, carry handles, installation, very quick, very simple, saving time and money when it gets to site. Uh, and probably one of the coolest things is this is the new remote control, which you'll start to see lots of functionality on. It's got a new design, new function. It's in line with the new displays. If for any reason this was to be misplaced, I simply can go and ask my AV guys if they've got an old NEC remote control. So with the old NEC remote control, I still have control of menu functions. I still have control of volume settings. I have control of being able to do input switching to HDMI and other sources which are available to this remote. Uh, and I also have the ability, if necessary from the screen, to actually put the screen into standby. So hopefully that quick overview of the display has helped. If you've got any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask me or a member of the team and we'll help wherever we can, and thank you.